Welcome everyone to this webinar hosted by Tordix about getting started with Qt on our system and modules in no time. With us today we have our preferred partner, the Qt company. My name is Samuel Imgruth, I'm the VP of Global Sales here at Tordix and presenting with me today I have Santu Ahonen, a product manager from the Qt company. Before we dive into the exciting stuff with Qt, let me briefly introduce Tordex. We design and sell system on modules based on ARM processors from companies like NXP and NVIDIA. We specialize in longevity, robustness, and ease of use of our products and offerings. For all our SOMs, you'll get a production-ready Linux or Windows Embedded Compact Port to Support package, and we also have various other software and tools provided additionally. We develop all our products in-house together with the Board Support package and provide you free technical support and a wealth of open development resources to make your development life easier. Here just a couple numbers um, to give you a sense about Toradex. We're a 15-year-old company. We currently have over 3,000 customers and are over 100 employees uh, in nine offices around the world. We also have an extensive partner network with companies like Qt uh, that support our products. Our computer modules typically power all kinds of products and applications that require reliable, industrial-grade computing platforms. Here you can see a few customer end applications on the right and all the major markets we serve on the left. Please note that the list is not complete. Now let's look at our products. Here we have all the products that we're currently selling into new designs. They're organized into basically two product families. On the top we have our Polis computer module family. It's more a higher end um, ARM SOM. And at the bottom, our long uh, established and well known Colibri form factor. These modules are PIN compatible and interchangeable within their family. This provides a high degree of flexibility and scalability for your application. Toradex is a global company and we do have direct sales and custom support from all our offices around the world. So please feel free to reach out to us, our nearest office, and we will be really happy to tell you a little bit more about Toradex, our products, or discuss your next project. So before we go next uh, and talk a little bit about Qt, I have a poll here which I'd like to start. Um, let's quickly see how many of you have used Toradex before? And I will give you a couple seconds to cast the votes until we are going to review those together. All right, they're coming in. Looks like we have a result. So about 60% of you have used Toradex before. That's great. Um, thank you for sharing that. All right, so let's go on. And I would like to go ahead and um, introduce the cute company. Before though, just a little quick, um, uh, we have a couple of logistical items here with the webinar. So if you have any questions during the webinar, you may post those questions in the dialog of your GoToWebinar toolbar. And then we'll try to answer those at the end in our Q&A session. We're also interested to hear your feedback about this webinar. There is a survey you can fill out at the very end and we highly encourage you to reach out to either of us Qt or Toradex to discuss your project's requirements, feature requests, and just let us know if you're facing any unresolved issues. We're here to help. A recording of the webinar will also be provided on our website in just a few days. Uh, you can find this at toradex.com uh, under webinars, and then you can also find it on our YouTube channel. So Qt is a Toradex partner providing a cross-platform, all-in-one, powerful, and modern development framework. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Santu Ahonen um, of the Qt company. Hello, thank you very much. So I'm Santu Ahonen, I'm working here at the Qt company. 
uh, in Finland, and uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the the cute and the good company. Four sections on this presentation. Uh, first, talk about the the cute and the good company itself. Then I'm going to go into the product licensing uh, and packaging, and then uh, deep dive into the cute for device creation, the product which is most interesting for for you guys working on the Dotted exports. And then uh, last, I'm going to run a, a very, very quick demo uh, showing you how to get your board fired and get started. But let's first start with the Qt company. The so Qt has been around for 23 years. And Qt is now on its uh, fifth uh, generation. So we're currently working on, on Qt 5. And the Qt 5.12 is going to come out towards the end of this year. Um, Qt, the Qt company owns uh, the Qt brand and is the biggest contributor of the Qt. Qt is fully open source, um, but, and the Qt company is making uh, 70 to 100 percent of the daily contributions to the Qt. Uh, we have customers in over uh, 70 different industries, uh, and uh, we have about 1 million developers uh, actively using Qt out there. So Qt is an all-in-one uh, software development framework. Qt supports uh, C++. Qt is not uh, a programming language of its own. Qt supports C++ development. Uh, we do have a QML, Qt markup language, uh, but Qt also supports Python or HTML5 um, or and a few other technologies for programming. Uh, the philosophy of the Qt is that you code it once and you can deploy it everywhere. So your Qt comes with a uh, rich set of different kind of libraries that take care of the operating system and hardware-specific adaptation. And while doing it, still the Qt applications compile as native applications in the local target. Uh, we do provide a very productive uh, cross-platform IDE for developers, which is called Qt Creator. Uh, but we also support uh, Visual Studio uh, through the Qt plugin. And this year, the big news has been us working on the designer tooling to, to really enhance the designer developer uh, workflow. And I'll have a few words on that later on. Qt, uh, the likelihood that you will actually use Qt in your daily life is very high. Uh, Qt is in the most of the top uh, automotive brands uh, in use. Uh, you'll find Qt in your, uh, probably in your home, possibly in thermostats or uh, anything that has a color screen. Uh, LG is a uh, known reference. Uh, you'll find Qt also in the industry, in different industries. Uh, Ulstein here is an example of a maritime build of Qt. So if you then look into the uh, the benefits of the Qt, so, so you can target all your end users with one technology. So the cross-platform means that the, the libraries uh, that you are using and the, the code you are writing uh, when you are using the, the Qt libraries and uh, you're writing the C++ code will then compile into any of these operating systems as native applications. So I'm going to jump into the Qt products and, and, and licensing. Um, Qt comes with the, the open source Qt. Um, so the open source Qt is the, the most popular uh, Qt uh, in terms of volumes. It's licensed under GPL uh, version 3 and LGPL version 3. Uh, it's free of charge, but it comes with the limitations and obligations uh, given by within these licenses. Uh, with open source Qt, you can target the desktop and mobile uh, out of the box. and uh, all the embedded targets uh, are, are behind the do-it-yourself work, and uh, there's a bit of a trouble to have to go to through to, to build the embedded targets for the open source Qt, but it can be used for embedded development. Then we have a commercial license of Qt, uh, which allows you to ignore the limitations and obligations of the GPL and LGPL licenses. The commercial license for Qt is sold uh, per developer. So every, each and every developer in the company needs their own developer license. The product Qt for application development is the product which is feature-wise exactly the same as the open source Qt. And on top of that, we have Qt for device creation, which is adding all the embedded development tools for what, what are needed on top of the application development uh, software package. 
No that allows you to target all the embedded devices uh, uh, out of the box uh, and you can start programming from day one. With the device creation, uh, you also need to buy additional distribution licenses for each of the devices. Uh, both of these products come also with a technical support. So, so when, when you're having a valid developer license, you get access to a 48 hour guaranteed response uh, technical support. And, uh, and that really helps in the commercial products and businesses. We do have also other commercial products uh, with the designer offering um, it has a license. And then we have add-on features for specific industries, uh, for example, automotive or industry automation or machines, uh, machine to machine protocols that are additional. And then we do professional services uh, for customers who need uh, more than just the license. So. So if you look into the, the, the benefits of the commercial license, uh, the, the number one benefit is that no need to comply with the LGPL restrictions. Uh, and that allows the customers to build uh, closed and locked down devi devices. So you don't need to uh, open up the device. Uh, and that's a really big thing for many companies, uh, for example, for warranty uh, reasons. It also securing you against the software patents and DRM and it's not contaminating you downstream because the Open source licenses, um, especially if you are not building your system directly to consumers, but you are uh, building it for somebody who's building it for somebody who's building it for consumers. Um, the open source licenses always go downstream and all the parties also below you need to approve and they cannot get rid of those. Uh, with the commercial license, you also get a freedom to modify and compile source codes. Um, you get uh, some performance benefits in there. Um, you can also keep uh, your cute usage confidential so sometimes companies don't want to reveal the technologies they are using and then um, we have some commercial value add uh, functionality available for the customers uh, the big thing also in the commercial license is the technical support so the the developer license comes with a 24 hour uh, 48 hour guaranteed response on on technical support and then um, we do offer other services also on top of that. So we can do uh, optimizations. We can help in hardware selections. We can help in in prototyping and, and concepting phase on, on making the right architecture choices. And, and then on the other end of the spectrum, spectrum is that we can, we can even do full turnkey solutions for customers. So uh, uh, these are additional services available, and these are really helpful when uh, the project is running into problems. And uh, instead of trying to banging your heads into the wall, uh, you have somebody to turn to and who has a lot of expertise and uh, knowledge on similar situations in other companies. Uh, here's an example of what we did uh, with the uh, professional services is a fast boot optimization. So the uh, unoptimized Yocto based embedded Linux stack uh, can take up to 50 to 20 seconds to boot, depending on the hardware. Uh, and when we optimize that, uh, we could make it to boot in 1.2 seconds, uh, which is a huge difference in user experience. And the the really the the grant of the work was was spent on actually on the hardware initialization, the, the firmware layer, and the operating system and kernel, where the Qt itself actually is uh, fairly good at this starting anyway. And of course, in the application logic, on on making sure that the right images are loaded at the very beginning of the application logic. So this is an example of the things that we can do with the professional services. So when you look compare the open source and the, the commercial license on the surface, um, it looks like that the, the, the with the open source license, there's only the development cost and with the commercial license, there are the license costs. But when you add all the elements into the picture with the platform maintenance, uh, responsibilities, uh, IPR, other legal consequences, uh, and then uh, addition development cost to, to make sure that the engineer is compliant with the license. And you compare that with the commercial license, this is um, where many companies turn into commercial license. So that was a really short capture on the, on the different licensing of Qt. And now we dive into the Qt for device creation, which is the product most, should be mostly interesting for you guys. 
So uh, device creation uh, offers ultimate performance for embedded device creation. So you can combine uh, C++ and QML and HTML in the application. Uh, we have uh, mechanisms to scale down into small hardware uh, with low resources. Uh, and at the same time, we have also provided and created a lot of technologies along scaling up into multi-screen, multi-processor, and different input uh, systems. Uh, with Qt, you can create very intuitive, responsive, modern user interfaces. Uh, and doing this is extremely efficient with the tooling we have. Uh, with the packaging and the way the device creation is created, uh, you, when you are using uh, standard reference hardware, you can start deployment and, and working in your project from day one. So instead of tinkering with uh, the environment uh, uh, for days and days and sometimes weeks, um, you have all the cross compilation tool chains and uh, the target device uh, software packages ready made for you so you can get your project running from day one. And Qt is a trusted technology partner. So Qt has been there for a long time. Uh, Qt has about 1 million active developers uh, and it's fully open source. So um, even if something would happen to the Qt company, uh, the Qt is not going anywhere. The community is, is carrying it to the future. So if you look at the some of the solutions uh, on on available on the machine and uh, automation industry, uh, and I'm not going to go explain these in detail. Uh, so you can look at these uh, at the end of the webinar when if you're going to look at the recording of these. But uh, Qt is um, widely used in the automation industry and machining. Uh, Qt is also uh, all over in the consumer electronics, so you can find Qt in washing machines, uh, televisions, coffee machines, uh, 3D printers, and several other, other solutions. The Qt UI, uh, you can do Qt UIs in three main three different ways. So there is a 2D and 3D UIs created with the QML, with Qt Quick and Qt Markup Language. Uh, you can do Qt widgets UIs uh, for your applications, and in which case the applications will look um, like a native look and feel. So with the same code, you can have an application that looks native Windows application, uh, and when you compile it for Mac, then it looks like a native Mac application. Or you can do hybrid UIs where you mix and match HTML5 and JavaScript uh, into your C++ and, and Qt QML application. That is a third way of doing UIs. Very efficient way of integrating the internet-based services into the, your application. So when you're scaling down, uh, we have a concept called Qt Lights. Uh, and the configuration tool is, is one of those things that comes with the commercial Qt. Um, that allows you to make a significantly smaller footprint uh, on all configurations. So we did uh, start this work in Qt 5.9, and uh, we are now sort of uh, finishing it now with Qt 5.12 towards the end of the year. Uh, already in 5.9, you can scale up, up to 60% smaller footprint than on the previous, uh, on the Qt 5.6 or earlier versions of the Qt. Um, We've also spent quite a lot of time to make things faster and more efficient. Uh, and of course, the smaller builds, you know, make things faster. Um, there's a flexibility there um, because you can choose what things to include and what things to ex exclude. So um, there is a quite a lot of flexibility in tuning your solution exactly to your needs. And this means uh, performance um, for your application at the same time. For compatibility, it's still cute. So it will work and it will compile on, on different versions of the Qt and all these different uh, operating systems. So you can build your solution on, on, on Linux and you can deploy it on Windows or Android or on an embedded uh, operating system. Then at the same time, we've also built a lot of technologies to scale up. Uh, we have customer solutions with five or more screens. Um, uh, there are 3D used, augmented reality, and virtual reality is coming into these solutions. Um, there is a integration with the GPUs and multiprocessor hardware, so you can take benefits of these um, different uh, CPU and GPU technologies. 
Um, you can add your own special keys, control lens, cameras, uh, touch gestures. There's a very uh, extensible and plug-in framework for the gestures. So you can add your own gestures if the ones that come with the system are not uh, suitable for you. And then you can manage uh, application threads and instances uh, through Qt, uh, for example, through uh, Qt Application Manager or, or, or do it on your own. Uh, Qt for device creation comes also with the boot to Qt, uh, and we're going to be looking into the boot to Qt stack today. So boot to Qt is something which is uh, basically a, a hardware firm where uh, Yocto-based embedded Linux, Qt libraries, and a Qt sample application ready-made, pre-built uh, for you. It's a great start for any project, uh, as this is the one that you can get running on, on most hardware from day one. It's also something that which is uh, good for development platform because everything is enabled in it but it's also when everything is enabled it's very bad uh, solution to finish the project so so you need the full customization to be able to then skin it down and remove the bits that you are not using and that's something that uh, if you don't know how to use uh, do that with the yocto uh, we are more than happy to help you through the professional services as I said, uh, one big thing this year has been the, the investments and work on the designer developer workflow. So the old model, how designers and developers used to work together was that the designer creates a great design of the UI and then saves it as a PDF and emails that PDF to the developer, who then is mutilating the design and try to mimic it and it gets it close but not there. And then this loop goes back and forward uh, for ages. So the new thing we are doing is that uh, we are actually creating integration to the common tooling used by designers, but we're also creating tooling for designers so that they can actually directly write and save um, the UI of the application into a shared repository with the developer. And then developer can obviously also edit the UI and add the application logic uh, into the application and the designer can see it on the fly on, on his uh, side of the doing the designs. Both parties can also deploy this into the actual target device and see what does the UI look like in the real environment uh, because uh, always when you're doing embedded development, the, the element sizes and content trusts and brightnesses and the aspect ratios and so on are really important to try those in the actual device instead of uh, using an emulator or just only the, the PC screen. Qt for application development. Um, Qt is much more than a UI library. So um, we have, a, and this is the list of the, the main add-ons and essential libraries in the and the Qt for application development. And then it comes with a long set of different kind of tools uh, used by the developers. And then if you look at the Qt for device creation, I'm not going to go into the details explaining all of these. So, so you'll find a really good explanations and tutorials in the, in the Qt and in the docs.qt.io. So if you really want to understand what these are and how to use them, um, knock yourself out with the documentation and examples. But uh, this is the Qt for application development. And then if you look at the, the Qt for device creation, um, the previous slide and all those libraries of the application development are in the gray in between. And uh, device creation comes with the additional uh, embedded solution for device utilities uh, and uh, Qt with 2D renderer, uh, software stacks for the both Qt stacks and tools to build your own stacks and then uh, embedded tooling for cross compilations on these different targets we also do support other operating systems than, than just embedded linux and then uh, remote de deployment debugging and profiling tools for really optimizing your solution for the target device performance and then uh, last slide on this this section is to promote the next webinar we are doing with Teradex, which is 14th of November, uh, and it's specifically focusing on industrial automation use cases uh, and industry and machining uh, use cases with, with Qt. So you, if you happen to work on that area, there's another treat coming for you in a, in a, in a month or so. 
So I'm going to go into the into the demo, and, and for practical reasons, um, I, I have four 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 parts on this demo. I'm actually not using a, a live demo because organizing the the web cameras and the the targets on my desk and and deploy uh, into the physical devices is a bit difficult. So I'm actually using a video, a pre-recorded video, and going to talk over that video. Um, but you have four four stages about the the powering up, the getting the Qt into the Autodex board, then getting the license for Qt, then getting the Qt onto your host machine, and then finally deploying your first application and uh, uh, doing some debugging on the target device. So let's get the video going, and this will mute myself, so I need to turn on the audio again. So just a second. Okay, so when you're powering up uh, your Toradex hardware, it l launches into the Toradex Easy Installer that gives you the list of these different kind of things you can install on your hardware. And there's a, a Qt4 device creation demo image, which is the boot to Qt image. And this will take a few minutes to launch, uh, but when it's done, um, you will see the demo application launcher and demo applications in your device. You can play with them there uh, after you're done with your playing with the with the device uh, you can go to the qt.io slash qt and toradex and get a license for qt and uh, if you don't have a qt account yet um, this will also create uh, a qt account for you you'll just fill in a form uh, send me to your down push the uh, send to the download and you'll get an email with the download address and your qt account details and credentials and if you already had a Qt account, uh, your evaluation rights are added into your existing Qt account, as long as you make sure that your whatever you fill in the form matches um, your existing account. Then you can go and download the Qt. So, so you log into the, your Qt account in account.qt.io, and then you go into the download section, and you pick the uh, online Qt for device creation online installer, and you download it for Linux or Windows, uh, what you want. Just when you are um, done with the download, make sure that if you have open source Qt, um, you don't mix the open source and commercial Qt as uh, you shouldn't mix those. Um, when you start the installation, um, you can, it gives you, based on your uh, Qt account, it gives you the different things you can install. And you'll find the Toradex targets under the Bolti Qt software um, in, under the device creation. And if you're not sure which boxes to tick, um, you can watch this video on slow mo, or you'll find really good tutorials online uh, to make sure that you know what to install. Um, what then you need to do is, is look into the demo uh, application launcher in your device uh, and go to the settings and find the IP address of your device. And you can then go into the Qt Creator under Tools, uh, Options, under Device, you add the IP address of your device um, into these settings. And that basically means that you're done. Uh, you can also connect to your device through a USB cable, which makes it even more simpler. So now look into the deploying your application and, and getting to know the creator. So creator has a really good set of tutorials uh, worth really looking into if you don't know Qt yourself yet. Um, you'll find a few hundred example applications, uh, which may be overwhelming, but there is an um, example for just about anything in the creator. Um, so feel free to copy paste, you know, items. And when you click one of the examples, um, you'll start the project. And that's when you configure that, which are the targets you will want to use with this project. So we already had the Torrex Colibri installed. So we select that as a target and say, let configure the project and it creates you the project view. And this is where you land. So uh, on the left hand side, you can see the project files uh, that are part of that project. And, and uh, this comes with the sample. Uh, next to that, you'll see the code editor, the developer UI designers, debugging tools, and project settings. And then on the bottom left are the most important buttons. This is where you select the target, you select the run, uh, debug, you select the uh, with the green triangle. So that's where you select it, um, the different things you are actually doing. So now, in this video, you can see the the, the actual device, and we add a breakpoint into the line 80 in this video, and we go directly into debugging. So I'm kind of skipping the deployment into the device. 
as it comes as part of this deep demo anyway. So we selected that we want to debug on Torrex, and then we click the debug button, and now the Qt creator is compiling the application. We can op open the debugger console and open the application output console, and we can see that uh, where is the script going on the compiling, and it's soon done with the compiling. And then it actually is sending the application into the device. Uh, and normally, if we were not in debugging mode, this is when the UI would be visible on the device. But so, since now we are in the debugging mode, uh, we actually want to start the, the the application on the debugging console. And what happens is that uh, the application is now launching on the device. We can manipulate the application. Whenever we hit the breakpoint, it actually stops. So we can then restart the application again. We can manipulate the application. And again, it hits the breakpoint, so we can restart it and on. So this goes on, and it's a super easy way to, to find things. And then we can remove the breakpoint on the fly from the code, and it no longer stops at that particular breakpoint. So that basically concludes this, this uh, super short demo. Uh, I really advise you to go through the tutorials to, to learn to do it yourself. Uh, and they are very good. So the future is pretty cute. And I, with that, I think I'll hand over back uh, to Samuel. Great. Thanks so much, Santu. And I uh, just want to remind um, everyone again here, uh, please uh, put your questions in uh, in the GoToWebinar toolbar. Um, if you have any questions for Santu, we'll get to those at the end. And uh, before we continue, I also have another quick poll here. So how many of you have actually been using Qt already? So let's start that poll. Um, we'll take a couple seconds to cast the votes. Uh, will be interesting to give you guys a bit of feedback. And also for Santu, how I many you know Qt? So let's look at the responses here. Okay, that looks actually quite good. 62% of you already know or have been using Qt. Perfect. All right. Let's move on. Um, so Qt uh, really has been a Torix partner for many years. Um, they are developing their software framework actually on Torix hardware. And we have recently strengthened our partnership, which allows uh, us to sell Qt distribution licenses um, on top of making it easier for you guys to evaluate uh, their products. Um, so let me briefly uh, get into this and uh, show you a little bit what it means. Uh, so we simplified the evaluation and use of the commercial version of Qt with our um, computer modules using the Tordex Easy installer, like Santo showed you before. Um, you're now actually able to get started with a boot to Qt demo image on our selected products literally with a few seconds of your first boot up. Um, the use of our SOMS is ideally suited for low to medium projects. Um, that's just the reality of SOMS compared to custom hardware. And uh, with that, in these volume ranges where our products make sense, you'll be able to bundle um, the buy of the hardware together with the Qt commercial license and purchase both of those together from Tordix. Uh, I wanted to highlight that you'll still uh, have to get the developer license uh, directly from the Qt company. Uh, most importantly, of course, we're providing um, improved technical support uh, for you guys on the Qt side um, and on the hardware. So Qt knows our hardware, we know their software. So at the end of the day, what that means for you, the increased collaboration um, makes your life easier. I also wanted to uh, talk about some uh, exciting news. Um, in fact, Qt is actually supported on the latest hardware um, that we're selling. Uh, here is our Polis IMX8 module, which runs the uh, brand new NXP i.mx8 Quad Max processor, which is um, only available with early access. So Tordex is an early access partner with NXP, and you get uh, basically you can get your hands on these samples through Toradex and you can already start developing Qt. IDOTMX8 is a great platform for Qt um, because it supports multi-screen, it has a, a very high performance processor and GPU to support very you know modern high-end user interfaces or just machine vision or even um, you know deep learning, machine learning type applications. 
with that, um, that's all we have prepared for you today. I want to do one last poll before we go into the Q&A session, and that would be um, what is your role uh, at your company? Uh, so we're going to open that poll and cast some uh, last inputs here. I'm going to wait a couple seconds to let you guys put in your votes here. All right, let's look at the results. Okay, so over 50% of you are software developers. Perfect. So I think uh, we have the right audience here with, uh, with Qt. And um, using our hardware makes your life easier, of course. Thank you for that. So let's um, go into the uh, Q&A session. Uh, just one more time, if you still have questions, put those into the uh, webinar toolbox on the right. Uh, let's start with one of uh, the first questions that came in actually for Toradex. Um, so what is the advantage um, of using a Toradex sum over like a mainstream board such as the Raspberry Pi? So this is actually a great question. And um, so like, like you, Toradex um, is selling a commercial product. With that, what you get is um, you actually get professional teams that support you. You can call us up if you have questions. You can write us email. Um, we have an office near you where you potentially can escalate things. So really, the, the biggest benefit is you work with a commercial company. We also do select um, all commercial-grade components with our products. We test our products for vibration. Uh, we cycle those through temperature um, in, a, in our testing. They're really designed for a 24-7 use. Um, some of our products are available in extended temperature configuration. That means you can go to minus 40 uh, to plus 85C. Um, and most importantly is the maintenance that we're doing in our product. Some of you may have medical devices, which does require very tight control on the hardware you're using. So at Tordex, we give you a 10-year availability guarantee. And within these 10 years, if there is any need to change the hardware, we have a strings and product life cycle uh, or product change notification process to let you know if you want to stay in your old hardware, you can buy those with end-of-life buys. If you want to move on, you know actually what we're changing. So we're very transparent there. Last but not least, probably the most important fact is you can actually use the same hardware in development and in production. So when you're buying a Toradex product and you, you just use it for evaluation, you can use the exact same hardware later on in your final product that you're selling in, in volume. And that's really the biggest benefit. So there's no need to change the hardware uh, while you're doing this uh, step. I hope I was able to answer that question. So a lot more questions came in. Uh, I'm going to go through first one here um, for Santo. Um, Interesting question. One of the attendees finds it easier and actually better to um, to use Qt to develop desktop apps compared to WFPF or Java FX. Why do you think Qt is not more widespread? Oh, that's an interesting question. Like, uh, I think Qt is very widespread, uh, uh, but why is it not widespread? You know, go and tell all your friends and other developers you know and. Uh, and they learn. Perfect. I'm going to go through the questions. Actually, one question that came in earlier for Santu um, about the licensing. For the runtime license, is this a per device license or how does the runtime licensing work? Yeah, the runtime licensing is a per device license uh, and in the, the price of that depends on the volume. So it's a logarithmic scale uh, from one device to millions of devices. And when we talk about the big deals, uh, when we start talking about the millions of devices, then uh, we usually uh, and there, we have a lot of other things also on the table for negotiations. So, but it's a um, it's a per device license um, based on volume. Okay, perfect. On that part, also there were um, you shared basically kind of like the difference between the open source and the commercial versions in terms of the features. So what, what are the major differences you really see um, in terms of advanced tools um, that you get with the commercial license? Well, um, you get the, the prepackaged, all the, all the features uh, for the embedded development. Uh, and then there are a few uh, features that you don't get as an open source developer. So we have 
uh, especially the debugging bridge and the way you can actually deploy into the target device is something that is only available for commercial customers. Um, also, we have some add-on features, for example, if you're working in the industry automation uh, and you need uh, the common machine-to-machine -machine protocols and that kind of features, those are not available for the open source customers. But most of Qt is available for open source customers. And I think um, this is really on the, on the side of the, the terms and conditions and the obligations and rights on the licensing side, which is what I see and what we see is the most important for the, the target of customer companies. Okay, and on that matter also for embedded, um, basically Qt for device creation, is there any major difference there just for this solution? Uh, there is the, the how you interact with the target device. So with, you can do the deployment and debugging on the target device, but you have to do uh, manual work and you have to do some command line uh, to make that happen. Uh, whereas with the commercial product, everything comes uh, ready-made for you and can start deploying on the target device from day one. Uh, I'd like to emphasize also the importance of the support there. Um, the commercial license comes with the technical support and you will get uh, a 48 hour guaranteed response times for your questions. Uh, the technical support is intended for finding issues with the queue itself, but uh, we uh, very often also answer the questions and on best practices and uh, help fixing your code on that. Uh, having said that, I think, you know, when we start seeing a lot of these kind of questions coming from one company, then we steer that to the professional services. And uh, there is, uh, uh, of course, a very large community uh, through which the open source developers can get support from uh, other open source users. But uh, there is a challenge with that is that the, those are uh, open discussion forums and you may or you may not get the response and you may or you may not get the right answer. So. It's a, it's a bit trickier when you are, if you're building a business uh, and you're relying on the open source uh, community to give you all the support, uh, it may or may not work. Okay, thanks for that. Now then, is Boot to Qt available for Windows CE or do you have Windows Embedded Compact support with Qt? Uh, you can use, uh, the Boot to Qt itself is not available for Windows CE, but we do have a very good documentation on how you can deploy into the Windows CE and uh, debug and deploy on that environment. Okay, um, then basically another question, can you easily import third-party C++ libraries in Qt? Well, that's a relative question. Uh, depends on the quality and how the third-party C++ library is done. Yes and no, uh, but you can do it. C++ uh, libraries and uh, additional extensions can be used uh, from Qt applications. Okay, and um, how about can uh, Qt for embedded systems or embedded devices be used without a screen, so headless? I think you yes. touched that quickly. Yes, uh, and I think uh, we have also been bringing some technologies into the Qt. Uh, if I name a couple of very interesting ones uh, recently is the WebGL streaming, which is a technology that allows you to stream your UI from a device to a standard uh, phone or tablet or uh, anything else that carries a standard browser. So all you need between these two devices is TCP IP connectivity and then you can run your uh, UI remotely on another device. Uh, also very interesting technology is the, the web assembly, which allows you to actually uh, run the application on a target device on a standard browser. And in both cases, the, the headless devices are very interesting. Those are very interesting use cases where the device itself is not having the UI at all. Uh, we are also seeing uh, solutions where there are headless devices that don't need any UI whatsoever. So they are, they're just uh, connecting the sensors uh, to the internet, for example. And Qt is being used on those solutions. Okay. Um, do you provide support for a build root environment with Qt? Uh, we, we do provide uh, documentation and we do have customers using BuildRoot, uh, but we are not providing off-the-shelf support for BuildRoot uh, currently. And uh, if you need that, we are more than happy to do that for you and with you uh, for your solution if you need any assistance. Okay, uh, another one. Uh, can you create a acute console application? 
Yeah, uh, yes, yes, you can. Uh, but yes, you can. Yes. Commercial side, but you already touched it. Um, basically, uh, how much does the cute commercial license cost? I mean, um, it's depending on the project, right? It's depending on the project. So, well, let's get in touch, and uh, our sales will help you with that. Perfect. Yeah. Or contact Toradex, we can help you there too. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, and then uh, there was another question about, um, actually one question came in about the uh, compute performance uh, for our IMX8 processor board. Unfortunately, I cannot share this here publicly because this is still early access, so that's under NDA, but we will follow up on that. But I think an interesting question for uh, Santo would be, what kind of um, platforms on the lower end, on the very entry level, and then on the very high end does Qt run? Or what are your compute requirements that you have to actually run Qt? Well, the the lowest uh, off-the-shelf support that comes with the device creation is the IMX7 baseboards that uh, are running eight megabytes of RAM and, and upwards. Uh, we recommend usually higher RAM because you also want to run some graphics in your application, and and those tend to those tend to take space. So, um, but that's the the lowest end, um, and I've seen uh, Qt running devices that have uh, a half an inch screen. So very, very physically also very small devices. And then on the, on the higher end, uh, we have seen these uh, solutions uh, where, uh, where there are, um, for example, automotive industry, there are multiple different screens. So there is the augmented reality uh, head-up display, there is the instrument panel, there is the entertainment panel, and there are a couple of screens uh, on, the, on the back seat for the children. So that already comes up into uh, quickly calculating five screens, uh, and in some cases a little bit more because there are actually multiple screens in those one physical screens. So, so there is uh, multiple different ways of doing that. Um, and uh, another reference was there, uh, also the Ulstein shipping company that did the uh, ship displays. So the, uh, and now the English is getting me by surprise, but the, the place where the captain is sitting and <laughs> steering the ship the cockpit. Yeah, the cockpit of the ship, the, the, the bridge of the ship uh, is running, um, if I remember, eight or nine different screens, uh, all showing different data from the ship on the queue. So um, we are seeing these solutions. And then uh, last but not least to mention, uh, Qt is also used in aviation industry where um, there are multiple different uh, screens on the cockpits, but uh, those are not public references, so, so I cannot talk more details on those. Line. Perfect. Um, is uh, the Qt Android app native or not? Yes, it's native. So it's compiled as a native, so it's not on top of the Android Java layer. Okay. And then is there any support for Qt um, on Windows CE with Toradex? Um, yeah, we do. Uh, I think then the, the, the first question is that does Toradex um, have the Windows CE running, um, Samuel? Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. I mean, Windows CE, thanks for that. So, actually, historically, Toradex has been basically a Windows CE company. And when we started 15 years ago, Windows CE was all we did. And still today, we're still selling new products um, with an updated Windows CE BSP, and we're maintaining that pretty much all the way until the end of those, uh, the life cycle of that hardware. Although we know yeah. Windows CE is EOL, uh, we at Toradex, we still maintain and support Windows CE for yeah, selected we, we, we also do have a support for Windows CE, um, but uh, as you said, it's at the end of its life, so so the universal Windows platform is the way to go uh, if you want a future compliance. So so this is, you know, depending on when the Microsoft finally pulls the plug. But okay. yes, we do. Yes, we do support that, and if it just runs on the hardware, uh, you can run your Qt application on top of that. Perfect. Now, I have a question for both of us. I will start. Does Qt and or Toradex have support for remote software updates via cellular or any other connection? So I can tell from the Toradex side, we are working on a new platform that has built-in support for this. It's not quite ready, but you will hear definitely soon about this from us. Um, from the Toradex side, with just the BSP, the base um, operating system. Now, how about Qt? 
Uh, well, Qt is, is widely used in solutions that uh, there are over the air updates. Over the air update is a, is a, depending on your angle, like if you're looking into uh, updating security devices, firmware, and operating system, and Qt, and application, the, the scoping of that is, and, and you have a few million devices, the scoping of that is fundamentally different than if you're just looking into updating your application and maybe the Qt under it. Uh, both cases can be done with Qt. Uh, we do have some solutions available for that, but typically if we end up doing the solution for you, we partner with somebody to meet really your needs. Okay, thank we you. I also a technology company. We are a software development framework company. Yeah, same here. I also want to add that we do have other partners um, through our partner ecosystem at Torix that do already today support uh, their own OTA framework. And I, I would assume you can load Qt on top of that. Yep. So another question here for Torix. Why do you use Angstrom images instead of like a fully featured Ubuntu Core, Debian, etc. is another great question. Um, we historically, our embedded Linux was Angstrom based. Um, however, we are going to have a additional offering on the Linux side that will be much closer to a Ubuntu Core or Debian uh, rather soon. So there will be some news coming here and we'll follow up on this. Um, all right, uh, we have a couple more. Uh, does Qt and or Tordex charge any royalty fee for their board? Um, so I'll add again, start again with Tordex. So from Tordex side, I mean, you buy the hardware, but other than that, there are no additional royalty fees. Some of our products have also a Windows CE license included, runtime license, in fact. So you can run the Windows CE on that without any additional royalty. Now, how about Qt? Well, uh, it's not a royalty. So if you use the open source Qt, uh, then you need to comply with the open source GPL3 and LGPL3 license in terms and conditions. And if you don't want to go through that hurdle or it's not suitable for your business, then you buy uh, the commercial Qt license. And with the device creation comes with the two forms. So you pay for the developers, each developer needs a license and you pay for the devices. So each and every single device needs a, a distribution license. But there is no royalty, so so you can you can you can charge uh, or price your solution whichever way you want. Okay, thank you for that. Now another question, which is a, a little bit for both of us. Uh, I'll start. How much of all this? So basically, cute the easy install at the Linux um, that we showed can be done. Uh, on the Colibri modules, which one of this is supported on the Apollis module, which platforms, uh, processor platforms are supported. So from the Tornix side, um, I can tell you that basically whether it's a Colibri or an Apollis doesn't matter much. Most of it is defined by the processor platform. Um, so that's typically it's the i.mx from NXP or from uh, NVIDIA, it's the Tegra family. Um, all the latest and greatest stuff is definitely much better supported on the i.mx products. Um, it's just they're more commonly used in um, in a Q-type application, and, and with that, Q has better support for this. Maybe, Santu, do you want to also add a little bit to that? I think you covered it very well. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's go on. Um, I want to know how to develop automotive-grade Linux apps with Qt. Is that possible? Yes, it's possible. We currently don't yet support uh, out of the box the AGL, uh, the automotive grade Linux, but we know Qt runs there and we know there are a couple of projects in there. If you, if you really um, have your heart in that, you know, let's talk through that, you know, with our sales and professional services. Okay, and then last question I have here, so please, if you have one more, uh, put it in. Do you have an estimate of how much uh, the realities or the license costs are for Qt um, or Qt embedded on the Toradex hardware? Some do you want to take that? Yeah, it, it depends on the volumes. So, so the licensing is volume based, and if you only manufacture one device, the price of the license is fundamentally different than if you manufacture ten million devices. So the, the pricing really changes uh, uh, depending on the volumes. And that's a, a thing uh, we really like to get in touch with you and talk those details. Yes, so please contact Qt or Tordex. We can both help you on that. I think that's it. Um, 
that's all for the questions that came in. Very good so, questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone for that. And um, with this, I would like to uh, close this webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Satu from uh, the Cute Company, for your presentations here and your contributions to this webinar. Uh, thank you everyone for attending, and we'll see you at our next webinar.